Hello, this is Sanat here, and welcome back to another Shuriken Sentai Nin Ninja review. This will be our final mega review for Nin Ninja, outside of a few other things for the roleplay line, and a couple Super Sentai Artisan Mecha items. This is the conclusion of the Nin Ninja mega review. Part three, part final, whatever you want to call it, here we are. Now, this will be the second half of the mecha line. Nin Ninja actually had quite a robust mecha line. Uh, last time we took a like, Shurikenjin along with Pound Maru, Yufo Maru, Surfer Maru, and Dino Maru. And today we're taking a look at Bison King, Gekiatsu Daio, and Lion Ha'o. Now, in the series itself, and in the toy line releases, Bison King came first, then Lion Ha'o, then Gekiatsu Daio. But for the sake of simplicity, we're going to take a look at Bison King first, then Gekiatsu, then Lion Ha'o. As he works with everything, we might as well just do him at the end. Um, so without further ado, let's begin. Now, this is the bison buggy. Now, the bison buggy itself is comprised of multiple components, uh, which we want to kind of break apart. First of all, uh, we have the overall main Otomonin for Star Ninja, and that is Rodeo Maru. Now, Rodeo Maru, uh, he is similar to Shinobi Maru in that it's a fully uh, separate mecha that can run around, do its own thing. Uh, and there was a Super Sentai Artisan version of this released. Uh, it was a fully articulated figure, came with a tiny Star Ninja to sit on his shoulder, along with the connector pegs necessary to work with Bison King, as well as coming with a small uh, Chosetz Aka Ninja to go with Lion Ha'o. So it was kind of a two-for-one deal with that set. But uh, this version of Rodeo Maru, he's got some knee bends and his uh, seat, so you can have him seated like this. Uh, you can also tilt the head up. And down, uh, and the arms move up and down like this. Uh, so not not too exciting, but you could set them in uh, Shurikenjin. Um, hint, hint. Now, the other thing we'll look at is on the back of the bison buggy is the Shuriken. Now the Shuriken, I love how all the Shurikens attach to some of them um, when they're the individual mecha. Uh, the Shurikenjin and the Gekiatsu Daio ones don't attach to any of their mecha directly. I think it's because those are multiple part mecha. These are, this is all Star Ninja and this is how you summon it. Um, so, uh, as always, blade comes off, doesn't really need to, um, but it's really cool. You wanna make sure that this point is down because it looks like a cowboy hat. Um, this actually works uh, with unique sounds with the burger, the burger thing. Uh, it is really not unique sounds. It's more like you're just pressing the button on the back of this, but we're just gonna do it for fun. So there you go. Uh, now, yeah, having this does not really change anything. In fact, spinning the shuriken doesn't even change anything because there's no tab. You're just pressing buttons to get the sounds. So you get that. But at least it does work with this. And if you're wanting to be Ninja Steel-esque uh, to summon the Bull Rider Megazord, you can also use this in the uh, Rockstorm guitar. Um, because that really uh, helps, I guess. But... Anyways, that's the shuriken itself. Uh, take a look at the bison buggy uh, on its own. Actually, we'll attach the shuriken back on just to kind of finish off the look. Uh, I like the look of it. Uh, of course, you got like the bull uh, horns on the top. Um, I don't like how they're all gappy on this side. I get that this is the side you'll see more, but like this just kind of looks a little weak. Um, but you do have some, you know, pegs sticking out, but nothing too bad. Yeah, those are just the arms of uh, Bison King. And this is clearly the gun uh, as well. But you do have uh, these interesting tire design where the outside rim spins. Uh, so you actually can get some really good uh, poses with it. And I do like the handle uh, kind of saddle look. So we'll take this and attach him here. Um, so he just kind of plugs on like so, and then his head's in place, his arms are in place. I do like how the head flips up. That's a nice touch. Um, and yeah, so you got you got Bison King's uh, Bison Buggy. Um, really cool. Uh, it does, like I said, it does roll. It's it's kind of rough, actually. Uh, the individual tires spin nicely, but actually rolling it, a little tricky. So now without further delay, we're going to transform it into Bison King. 
All right, start up the transformation. We're gonna pop the gun off the side, if we can. Come on, there we go. Pop the shuriken off the back. Uh, we're gonna leave him in place and just fold his legs up uh, like this. So he's kind of freewheeling. We're then gonna take and separate from here. Just set that off to the side. Take the body, the feet will flip out, click in, out, in and out. Pull the arm down, pull the arm down so we got the main body. Uh, and then we're gonna take this part here. This is gonna fold down. So will this. You can bring his legs down, you can kind of fold them nice and neat there. Um, I think officially somewhere I saw it was supposed to stick out like that, but it folds, so I don't see why not. Uh, we're gonna do that. We'll stick this straight down. So click in place, I'll uh, we'll hand him the gun. And to top it all off, we have the shuriken, which we'll place right on top of Rodeomaru. If I can get it to activate, there we go. So there is Bison King, and pressing the button again just does the same sound. Uh, here's Bison King. Now, he is a shorter uh, mecha. Like, he is on the shorter side. Like, for example, bring in Shri Kenjin. You can see that, well, he's not actually that short. Um, he looks stumpier than Shri Kenjin does, but they are about the same size. So, I do like um, similar sizing with mecha. And I, I like this size overall. It's not too big, it's not too small. Um, now, he is pretty hefty. I do think that I like him more than Shri Kenjin. And part of that comes from the more uniform design. He's just. He's more bull, he's bull-themed, he's cowboy-themed, he's not two trains and three animals. Two vehicles and three animals. But um, he's a, got the gun, love the gun design. Uh, that's pretty much all articulation you're going to get is the shoulders. Uh, you could move a little in and out, uh, just because of the way the arms work. If you wanted, I do like how these look like tassels, um, and how this gold kind of hides as well as the tassel, uh, which I think is really cool, and just kind of the overall cowboy boot design. And the head's just super cowboy-y. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much the look of Bison King. Now, what's interesting is that unlike other uh, secondary mecha for six rangers in previous Super Sentai series, he actually does combine with some of the auxiliaries as well as an alternate formation with Shurikenjin before we get to the big combination of King Shurikenjin. Um, so he actually combines with Dragomaru and Surfer Maru. So let's take a look at that now. So we're going to take a look firstly at uh, Bison King Surfer. Now this one has a little bit of a backstory behind it. Um, as I mentioned in the uh, previous video when I talked about Surfer Maru, I'll pull him off, uh, on the board you can notice the symbol for Bison King to attach him. Uh, and it has a whole specific peg for it. Um, I did not mention that there is even shoulder clips for the shuriken. Um, not to mention his head can tilt up, part of the transformation, but still there. There was a lot of work put into Surfer Maru to give him Bison King compatibility, and they never used it in the show. They absolutely never used this combo, which seems really odd to me. There was so much work put into the toy to make sure it was compatible, and it's the only Otomo Nin directly compatible, you know, by uh, design with Bison King. So I really don't know what went on there, but that's not going to stop us from forming Bison King Surfer. Uh, so we're going to pull uh, Rodeo Maru and the Shuriken straight off. Okay, maybe not the whole upper chest here. It's a bit of a tight connection. So we'll take those off. And they're just going to sit out to the side. They're not involved in this at all. Because um, they're not Takaharu. They're not involved. Okay. So taking those aside, uh, we're going to take uh, Surfer Maru, uh, the Otomonin here. Uh, fold his head up. Get him kind of in that same riding pose. Uh, that Rodeo Mario usually is in. So we'll do that. We'll take that and attach him onto there. He's got the pegs, so he just clips. And he clips like this. Um, the legs, they don't fold up as nice as on Rodeo. Um, I will say that, but, you know. Non-canon combination is non-canon. Um, then from here, we're going to attach the peg... So you can go. You can go either side with this one, but uh, we're gonna put that there. And then, lastly, we're gonna top it with the shuriken. Fold the face up and click it on here. If I can get his body out of the way. Okay, here we go. 
trying to get it on. Doesn't want to fit. Your head's in the way, Sir Fermara. So, let me get this straight. There's all the work put into this to make sure that Surfer Maru has clips, fits on the Bison King platform, has an extra clip to put Bison King on it. They don't use it in the show, but you didn't ever program in a second sound effect? This seems really weird to me. It's like they started the concept of having Surfer Maru combine with Bison King to then just ditch it before they did the sound effects programming. Because... Should say Bison King Surfer, but there it is saying Shooty Kenjin Surfer. So I'm really kind of confused by the whole thing, and it's really quite an anomaly when it comes to Sentai Mecha. We usually don't get combinations scrapped from the series entirely, and we certainly don't see this much work put into a toy for a combination that's not in the show, nor has a sound effect. Really kind of strange. However, what is in the show is a combination between Bison King and Dragomaru. So, now we're going to make Bison King Drago. Now, as of the recording of this video, this has not appeared in Super Ninja Steel. I'm not sure if it will. It might. We'll see. I haven't really checked to make sure the monster of the week that this combination fought is already happening in Ninja Steel or anything. I don't know. I also don't know if this is even possible with the American toys, but I don't see any reason why it wouldn't be. Um, so, this is a very simple combination to pull off, actually. So, first of all, we're going to take away Bison King's gun. Uh, we're going to take Dragomaru and split him up again. So we're going to take the two shield parts off and the tail. And we're going to turn him into an arm, uh, as we've done before for Shurikenjin. We're going to then remove Bison King's arm. Uh, this arm here, we're going to turn into a fist, which we'll see more of this later. Slide this on, fold this up, attach the arm back on like that, which looks really freakish, really freakish. Uh, then we're going to attach the sword here into the gun and plug these onto the side. Yeah, that way. And there is Bison King Drago. Now, there is no sound for this. There is no official combo in the toy instructions. This is something they did in the show purely because they could. Um, and what it is is actually kind of interesting because instead of being a made-up combination that they just kind of slapped together... Uh, they actually incorporated it into something that could be done with the toy, which I really appreciate. Um, he does have one giant arm over here, and this is one giant weapon, but it is definitely possible. Now, these two transformation pieces aren't unique to this combo. They're actually designed for King Shurikenjin, the combination between Bison King and Shurikenjin, which we'll take a look at now. So here we have Bison King and Shurikenjin. Now, the two of these can combine together using the Gatai Shuriken which I would show you, but they never made it. The Chogatai Shuriken got made with the Red Blade, but the Skull Blade one did not come out in the Ninja toy line. It did come out in the Bandai of America Ninja Power Star packs. So good on you, Bandai, you win one point there. Um, but that's not going to stop us. So King Shuriken is an interesting combination as it's the fusion of these two, and it's one that's just standalone. It means there's nothing else that goes on with it. We get a lot of super combos that go into ultra combos in the form of you just kind of add on to the super combo. This is just a super combo that's just on its own. So, without further ado, let's begin. So, step one, uh, we're going to take away the weapons. Uh, some of this will be familiar from Bison King Drago. Uh, we're going to remove the arms of Shurikenjin. Both of those. We're going to take the Shuriken off. We'll take that away. And we're going to leave him like that. Uh, we're then going to come over to Bison King kind of rip him to pieces. So we'll take his gun apart. We'll take the shuriken off his head. I think we're taking the shuriken off. We'll figure that out in a minute. Uh, take Rodeo Mara off. Take this piece off. Now this part, the whole like inner workings thing, uh, we're going to pull this off like this. Um, this is going to house some stuff in a minute. Fold that up uh, now. Uh, we're going to stick that out just for simplicity. Put that over here. Uh, take the arms, they'll each um, have a fist fold out, like we saw when we did the Bison King Drago. Um, we're then going to take this back support off, 
take this piece off, split this in half, fold that away, bring those forward, uh, unhinge these and fold them back, I believe. Yeah. Actually, we can leave them out. Nope, we're doing it like this. This is how we're going. Okay, so we're doing this. Um, this is one of those break everything apart and then try to figure out how it all goes back together things. Uh, so we're going to do this now. They did put symbols. This is for Bune Mar uh, This is for Wanmaru, Bune Maru, so you know which legs to attach to. So now we got to mess of parts. Um, this thing's going to get really tall in a minute, but we'll start from the bottom um, and we'll get there. So we're going to put that leg on here. Folding this back tends to help too. Um, clip this in place, fold it up. You can see we're already getting a little tall, so we'll, we'll assemble some more components here uh, before we change camera angles. So this fist isn't this one. This is the fist. Uh, you put the hand in on this, works like a handle, fold the arm up. Now this will give us like a really big arm. It didn't make sense for Bison King Drago, it makes more sense here. So we'll do this, put this on, fold that over, big arm. Uh, the weapon assembly we did last time for Bison King Drago, same deal. It's actually pulled from King Shurik Engine. Actually, everything in Bison King Drago is pretty much pulled from this combo. So we got that. Um, we're going to then take... I did realize we do need to reattach the shuriken here. Um, so we'll do that. By the way, if you ever want to cancel the sound, that's how you do it. Um, we're going to take and attach this here. Um, so you got the hat. Kind of Wait, no, that's not right. I don't think that's right. I don't know anymore. Nope, that's not correct. Okay, I'm going to take this off, actually. We're going to put the shuriken in... Sure, this is where it gets tricky. Then I'm going to attach this piece onto the shuriken part like this. And then we'll attach this last because this activates the sound for King Shurik Engine. Um, this is then going to attach back onto here, like so. Um, we're then going to attach both the arm here and the arm here. This is getting really convoluted in a second here. I'm going to put the uh, sword in place. <laughs> we basically got them in two parts now. Um, this last little piece, though, we're going to put this here. Um, I'm going to put this together. That, and we're going to change camera angles. All right, from this angle, we're going to take the upper half, slam it on down here, click that in place. Uh, yeah, I think canonically this is supposed to be up. We're going to fold it back just for the sake of looks. And then we're going to take the Bison King Shuriken and place it right on top. I love the mix of the ninja sound with the rodeo sound. It looks, it sounds really cool. But here is King Shuriken Jin. Uh, by far the most complicated combination of this whole mecha line. And actually one that turns out pretty halfway decent. Um, he does look a little disproportionate. Uh, he's got a very long torso, very short legs in comparison, but the arm's length, I think, does a good job. And it's very slapped together, but here it is. All right, so um, let's talk about uh, aesthetics a little bit. Uh, first of all, I don't like the empty pegs, but can't really do anything about that. It's not the most distracting thing you probably can't even notice because of the backdrop. Um, coming over here, I don't like how much this sticks out. It just juts out over. Um, and at certain angles, you can't see King Shurik Engine's face. Um, but other than that, it's a very clean combination, uh, which I do like. I like the Shuriken on top of Shuriken look um, as it fits the theme of the, the series. Um, I do like how uh, Shinobi Maru is still piloting this thing, even though it's gotten really, really big. Um, but overall, that is the King Shurik Engine combination, also known as the Ninja Fusion Zord. As far as I can tell, the Bandai of America version actually did this correctly, and it looks pretty good. So you're not going to miss out on anything there. Uh, I think the sword thing is a little different, but uh, yeah, that's King Shurik Engine. So let's go take a look at something simple, Gekiatsu Daya.